in real life, when you go outside, sometimes we need the National Guard. 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 So a lot of comments I get on YouTube are Americans telling me to stay out of American politics. Please don't talk about American politics. How can you, a British person, know anything about American politics. And despite seeing this criticism time and again, why do I have to constantly watch videos where Americans who live in America seemingly have lived in America their whole lives don't know anything about their own country? Why is a British person having to point out what is wrong with a video game company promoting the National Guard? Now I've given a lot of credit to Angry Joe for being one of the more progressive I guess video game commentators, I mean, as far as that community goes, he is one of the, you know, less toxic people. He often uses his platform for good, but if you guys remember, I made a series called The Politics of the YouTube Gaming Community, going through, you know, The Quartering and The Act Man and Angry Joe, and it was like a scale, right? So The Quartering was the most toxic, Act Man was sort of in the middle, and Angry Joe was the least, but he would still parrot things that The Quartering would say, and the point of the series is to show how this sort of opinion from, I guess, the extreme side often in the gaming community filters down to, I guess, the more moderate or the more liberal side. Now, Angry Joe recently called out people for being outraged that the National Guard were advertising on GameSpot, which is obviously one of the biggest video game outlets in terms of journalism. But I'm gonna go a bit more in depth with what that controversy was. I'm gonna explain Joe's comments, and I think I'm gonna use that as a jumping off point to talk about why the National Guard are really, really awful, and they're not just some friendly, helpful force that will help when there's a hurricane. The National Guard not only help America with its awful imperialist foreign wars, they also shoot civilians back home asserting their First Amendment rights. And this happened only recently with the Black Lives Matter protests. I think it's pretty outrageous for a gaming publication to advertise for the National Guard, don't you think? Especially when they're supposed to be for equality, for Black Lives Matter. Now before we get into the rest of the video, if you like my work, if you want to support it, maybe like the video, maybe subscribe to the channel, maybe check out my Patreon in the description. Also in the description are my social medias and my podcast, so please check all those things out. So last week, GameSpot tweeted, join us as staff Sergeant Murray from the Army National Guard gives us his highlights from Gamescom 2020, presented by at the National Guard, followed up by, to learn more about the Army National Guard, visit the nationalguard.com esports. Obviously using the failed tactic of the US Army to try and recruit people through video games. So amidst all the controversy, Gamesport actually took down the advertisement, but here is a quick clip someone managed to grab. I need you focused and ready to go. Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant Murray I'm with the Army National Guard. Here are my highlights from Gamescom. Pretty excited, we have light at the end of the tunnel. World of Warcraft's newest expansion, Shadowlands, hits October 27th. Got the goosebumps for the animated short Afterlives during Gamescom. Did you see Uther and Arthas? It's not vengeance, it's justice. Like, I got pretty pumped up over that. I've just got to figure out if I'll be trash on my rogue or trash on my hunter for Shadowlands. Either way, for the Horde. Uh, we got to see more gameplay footage of Star Wars Squadrons. We saw the Imperial mission behind enemy lines. I'm looking forward to playing this in VR on my Oculus Rift S. But speaking of VR, the biggest surprise for me from Gamescom, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond. We haven't seen a Medal of Honor title in eight years. This one will be fully immersive in VR and includes VR exclusives. I'm pretty excited, but that's just my highlights. Find me and the rest of the Army National Guard gamers on Twitch. So again, pretty scripted, pretty similar to, you know, the videos I've made on the Army esports team. And it's obviously the purpose of it is to make the National Guard seem like friendly, average gamers. So come join the National Guard and you can play video games for a living too. Just like if you join the Army, you can join the esports team. Now the editorial team at GameSpot were pretty pissed off. And one of them actually interacted with me, but they deleted their tweet. So I guess I'm not going to say who they were basically saying they found it, you know, abhorrent. And lots of people shared the sentiments, so just a few tweets from games journalists and people who used to work at GameSpot. So Austin Walker saying, whoever posted this, passes up the chain. This is not only gross on its own merit, but it's also a disgusting betrayal of the content teams who have worked exceptionally hard, especially over the past year, to make GameSpot a brand worth advertising with in the first place. Danny O'Dwyer, probably one of the more prominent people who used to be on GameSpot said, 
Saw GameSpot trending and was briefly terrified that there was layoffs. Turns out it was a tweet about a paid promotion with the National Guard. My sympathies with the many staffers who were probably vocal about how stupid an idea that was. Now for someone who works for a magazine, you don't really get much say in you know who advertises with your company. But you know, if this was going on at my company, I would say that I was uncomfortable with it. But at the end of the day, this editorial team, the people who write this stuff at GameSpot, they wouldn't have had any say in this. So if you're going to direct any hate at people, definitely don't direct any hate to the writers, the journalists, you know, the general content creators at GameSpot. And in general, I feel like they do a good job and they're a lot more left leaning than IGN. So why are the National Guard so bad? Let's hold for a second. I'm going to explain that in detail at the end. But who can forget the Kent State shootings, where the National Guard killed four students in 1970 for protesting the Vietnam War. Totally just a very friendly organization who helped with natural disasters, right Angry Joe? So Angry Joe hosts a news show with his two friends, and normally with bad opinions like this, I let it slide, but this actively made me mad about how uninformed they were while trying to shit all over people who could see how unethical it is to advertise for the US military, especially parts of the military that have been actively putting down Black Lives Matter protests in the last months. So take a look at this clip. Really? If you really want to like see what the internet gets outraged about, this is a really fun story because I just don't, I don't understand. You don't understand. GameSpot. They should be mad about fucking mad at They should be 20%. mad about it, but they're mad about GameSpot because GameSpot had the audacity, the nerve, to run an ad campaign for the U.S. National Guard. The outrage train here. just went completely off the rails and people were pissed and they were f like, and then furious. The ad campaign is gone. They, they immediately pulled down the tweets. They're not, I don't know if they're going to continue doing it. Why? Uh, because people don't want them advertising for the U.S. Armed Forces. But they will, they are totally Fuck fine you. with calling. If the National Guard shows up and say, hey, we want to inject money into gaming. And by the way, we exist in case you want to sign no. up. No. Get Worst thing, it. most disgusting thing I've seen on See, the internet. Here's Maybe the line, the most disgusting thing. <laughs> and, and here's the line. Then you have the army going on Twitch and say, hey, you want a free Xbox? <laughs> Click this link. You are now in the army. Yeah, you, you've well, what's your social? To that is, to Iraq. That <laughs> is where you can get upset. But if they're just simply saying, hey, we exist, and uh, here's some money, can uh, let them know we exist yeah. in case anybody wants to sign up. <laughs> Fuck you! Disgusting. Yeah. Get that shit out of my face, Joe. Oh. Ugh. Well, you know, Try I don't know if you know this, but the National Guard is helpful. They help us in disasters. I, I, no. I know we went through several disasters with Anthem and Madden and all these other gaming disasters. But in real life, when you go outside, sometimes we need the National Guard. So, Angry Joe, when do you think you need the National Guard more? Do you think you need them more when you're protesting the Vietnam War? Do you think you need them more when maybe you're protesting an oil company backed by the US government taking over the land of natives? Do you think you need them when you're protesting police brutality and police violence that often kills unarmed black people? Is that when you need the National Guard? So I guess the smugness and how ridiculous they think it is that people are mad is what gets me about this clip. Again, how do these guys live in the United States? How have these guys lived for the last six months and not seen what the National Guard have been doing in their own streets. And at the very least, how do they not know about Kent State? That is just synonymous with the National Guard. Granted, okay, I've had a good education, you know, history degree and international relations masters. A lot of it is focused on US history. I am pretty informed on US politics and US history, but I don't live there. It's not in my culture. Surely if you have these organizations constantly advertising to you, maybe you'd know a thing or two about them. The National Guard is not some apolitical civilian military that just helps when a hurricane hits. So again, very annoying. They're trying to link it to like cancel culture and like, you know, you can't say anything. The National Guard exists and that's all they're saying. No, the problem is that the National Guard, just like the US Army, are trying to use video games to sanitize their horrible image to get more recruits to join. That's the whole problem, but let's get into specifically why the National Guard are so awful. A really good article from In These Times titled, The National Guard crushes protests just like the military does. The National Guard's military purposes are clear. It is the reserve force for the Army and the Air Force, subject to the dual authority of state and federal leaders, and the Guard has mobilized to participate in brutal wars. The US heavily relied on the Guard to fight the US war in Iraq, with Guardsmen compromising 41% of US troops in Iraq in 2005. This is the organization Angry Joe and his mates 
think it's so outrageous that people are mad are advertising and gaming outlets. In 2011, the National Guard boasted that it deployed more than 250,000 Guard members in support of the Iraq war overall. So domestically, let's go over some of the awful stuff the Guard has done. The Guard has been deployed to participate in brutal chapters of US history, particularly efforts to break and undermine strikes. The Guard was sent in to crush the Great Railroad Strike of 1877, and in 1914, it participated in the Ludlow Massacre that left 25 people dead. In 1970, President Richard Nixon sent more than 20,000 members of the National Guard to New York City to break a postal workers' strike and get the mail moving again. More recently, the Guard has been mobilized to enact a brutal Trump policy. In 2018, Trump sent more than 2,000 members of the National Guard to the US-Mexico border, where they helped the US Border Patrol with surveillance, intelligence, reviews, and other tasks. In terms of the protests, which I was talking about earlier, the National Guard says as of June 2nd, nearly 41,500 National Guard members were activated in 33 states in Washington, D.C. in response to civil unrest. This is on top of the 37,000 Guard members activated for COVID-19 response. And these are numbers that are pretty unprecedented for the National Guard being active in the domestic scene. So also the National Guard has been implicated in at least two shootings related to the response to the protests, one of them deadly. On June 1st, Louisville, Kentucky resident David McAtee, a 53-year-old a black man, was killed after police and Kentucky National Guard members shot into a crowd with live ammunition in the city's majority Black West End when trying to enforce a curfew. Not a single member of the Louisville Metro Police Department at the scene had activated his or her body camera, surprise, surprise, casting significant doubt on the police claims that they had been fired upon first. Aren't they such a lovely organization? Angry Joe should say you shouldn't be outraged about. Because if you like video games, maybe come join the National Guard and then maybe one day too, you can shoot live rounds at people just, you know, using their First Amendment right to peacefully protest. So there's multiple instances of this, but here's another one you might have seen on Twitter and social media. This wasn't the only act of violence committed by the National Guard. Video footage posted to Twitter on May 30th by researcher Tanya Kirsten appears to show a military Humvee escorting Minneapolis police as they do a sweep of residential street and shoot paint canisters at residents sitting on their front porches, shouting, light them up. The National Guard helped police violently clear the way for a Trump photo op at St. John's Church on June 1st. Who can forget that? In Chicago, the National Guard have been used to enforce police perimeters, asserting an intimidating presence in the city where hundreds and possibly thousands have faced violence attacks by police. Again, not some apolitical organization, just a domestic military force helping to crush protesters. Nothing new, the National Guard were also sent to the Ferguson protests, and here's a report from The Guardian, just a quick one. Troops referred to Ferguson protesters as enemy forces, email shows. As the Missouri National Guard prepared to deploy to the streets of Ferguson last year during the protests sparked by the shooting death of Michael Brown, the troops used highly militarized language such as enemy forces, and adversaries to refer to citizen demonstrators. So one more, National Guard deploys missile launchers to the Dakota Access Pipeline to observe protesters back in 2017 after they helped brutalize those protesters in 2016 at the end of the Obama administration. In this video, we touched on many things. We talked about, you know, the army, the military, the National Guard, using video games to target young people to get them to join. We talked about Angry Joe and his meathead friends who seemingly don't understand what the National Guard does and think you're ridiculous if you think it's bad to target young gamers with a really hyper-militarized force which has historically brutalized unions, brutalized peaceful protesters, killed peaceful protesters, and this didn't stop in 1970 with Kent State it's happening right now in the US. Even people who seem, you know, fairly intelligent, like Angry Joe, you know, fairly intelligent, don't seem to know what the, their own institutions do in the country. Yes, the National Guard have helped with coronavirus. Yes, the National Guard help with hurricane relief. They also help with police brutalizing protesters. They also shoot protesters themselves. They have always done this, and they also fight in America's foreign wars. Isn't that a crazy statistic? 41% of American soldiers in 2005 in Iraq were in the National Guard. 250,000 by 2011 had served in the Iraq war. Not your friendly neighborhood National Guard giving out you know, aid boxes to grannies stuck in a hurricane affected area. So as for Angry Joe, I'm not really gonna cancel him or say you shouldn't watch him. It just shows you can't always trust what, you know, Americans say or what these types of people say. And as good as he is on some things, he obviously has some problematic stances. And, you know, I highlighted this on my own video about 
the toxic politics of the gaming community that focused on him specifically. Anyway, that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please like the video, maybe subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Please also follow me on social media at the Kavanaka on Twitter. I'm nearly on a thousand followers, so please help me achieve that. Also check out my Instagram, so at the Kavanaka for them. Check out my Patreon as well, which is in the description. And thanks for all the support there. Also check out my Reddit, so you slash Tommy Cahill 1995 for my personal Reddit r slash for Cavernacle for my subreddit, come and join that. Check out my written work in the description. Check out my podcast I've recently done with my girlfriend on Spotify. It's also in the description. God, there's a lot of things to say these days. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.